Hey, this is Red Band coming to you live from the world famous comedy store main room for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony Hinchcliffe. Yippee doo da day, motherfuckers. Here we are. Good evening and welcome. Brian Red Band. Hello. Back Tony? from beautiful Austin, Texas. That's back right. from uh, sitting on the throne during a, a wonderful, wonderful uh, slew of Joe Rogan experience That's episodes, amazing. including, of course, my favorite episode of all time, the great Kanye West. Yes, and I got two hugs from him. He showed us that little creepy hologram before it was announced, and I thought that was very touching. He's like, very, you know, showing us videos on his phone and stuff. He's it a was, good guy. He was a very sweet, good, very good guy. He was a sweetheart. He was and, a very, a, and a fucking genius. Yeah. The stuff he was saying during that episode was really mind boggling. I thought it was cool too how Rogan was able to like listen to like that 20 minute thing and then just really wrap it up into a, like a very nice package. I think Kanye yeah. actually really respected Joe for that. Like yeah. it, it was it was cool and he's going to be back he said. And also it was still super entertaining. I mean it's in and, and also even though Joe my take on it Joe doing a minimal amount of talking mm-hmm. still unbelievable hosting. Like yeah. it's almost harder to host while not having input um, because the decisions, the qu- next question that you ask is that much more important. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was just incredible. Yeah. Incredible. So great guest and obviously a great host, Rogan and Kanye. Wow. Yeah. Um, so here we are. We're back at Kill Tony. Welcome back home to beautiful Los Angeles, California. And we're here, quarantined off with a, maybe a total, grand total, I would guess maybe 15 people in this room that we used to have uh, 550 people in every single fucking Monday. Um, but here we are, you know what I mean? It's better than this. <laughs> you know? uh, so this is exciting, and uh, I'm happy to be here. Hey, you know who else is here? It's the great Ryan J. Oh, Ebel. Yeah. Look at that guy right there. That Whoa, happy guy. there's the wink. And the point, and another point. Holy shit, he's just giving them out for free tonight. <laughs> he draws every single episode of Kill Tony. All those prints are available at ryanjebelt.com, including all the tour posters, a couple of limited edition t-shirts, and the drawing of tonight's episode, which he has already begun right now. Hard at work. Some other great people in the audience tonight as well. Charlie from Delicious Vito's Pizza is here. <laughs> Royalty in these parts. In fact, I didn't tell you this, Charlie, but I placed a secret order yesterday, the eggplant parmesan appetizer with my favorite baked ziti. Slammed it down like a champion. Gives me all the fuel I need for an amazing day. And then I chase it down with a caveman coffee, which you could do as well by using the promo code KILLTONY, getting 15% off your order. Incredible stuff. I don't know how it packs so much energy in a can, but somehow it does. And also a shout out to the great Gino from Speedweed over there. He's the man. Also the CEO of Better Box Studios, which uh, was a tremendous, tremendous second home to us during these wild times um, of this unprecedented pandemic. And so, with that said, we are all set to start tonight's show. But before I bring out tonight's guest, here's a little bit more about the amazing sponsors that made this episode free for you, the lucky listener. Hiring can be challenging, but ZipRecruiter makes it fast and easy. One CEO, Allie, needed to hire for a multifaceted role at his wallpaper company, Walls Need Love. He was looking for someone who was the right fit for his team and culture, but his search was slow going. So he turned to ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter's powerful matching technology identifies the right people for your job and actively invites them to apply, which is why you should try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash KillTony. That's how Ali found Savannah Ray. Allie said Savannah's skills and experience were a great match for the role. Plus, she applied within a few days after he posted the job. Through ZipRecruiter, Allie has hired everyone from head of marketing to his sales director to lead graphic designer. But Allie's not the only employer who loves ZipRecruiter. That's right. A lot of them do. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself how ZipRecruiter makes hiring faster and easier. Try it for free. That's right, free at ZipRecruiter.com slash KillTony. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash K-I-L-L-T-O-N-Y. ZipRecruiter.com slash KillTony. So uh, I'm watching the uh, KKL9 News at Noon, June 11th, and it opens up with a special report 
Right behind this fence is where the body was found this morning, about 6.45 in the morning. And they showed Don Barris's apartment complex. That's the, the apartment that the manager lives in. Uh, I wonder if Don killed the guy. Dave's gonna change his identity because out of county murdered somebody. You don't feel this witch doctor put this magic dust on him, totally transformed him. He will do anything to look like somebody else. Now let's reveal that new year. Whoa. It worked. Oh my god. For the guy that has been taking abuse from him for the past 26 years, I hope I'm the guy that puts him away and locks him up. He is a son of Satan, the devil. He's a murderer, a killer. Now he's not Dan Barnes, he's the new Dan. Now he's new Dan. Oh my God. I know the laws, I know how this system works, and I know how to arrest somebody. So bottom line, I'm not an idiot. And we are back, and I am so excited about tonight's show. This is uh, probably, pound for pound, without a doubt, the best guest that we've had, uh, not only since the pandemic started, but also, perhaps, of the year 2020, because this man was on the show in January of this year, one of our famous sold-out shows here in the main room, and he brought the cast of the movie that he created with him. The greatest comedy movie of all time, Windy City Heat. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you one of my favorite comedians and favorite friends on the planet. It's the great Don Barris. Wow, it's really him live in the flesh on a Monday at 8.15 p.m. He is here. He's back. The king of late night at the comedy store. The creator of the Ding Dong Show, the longest running show in comedy store history. And the star of the comedy store documentary yes. that just came out. All five Hunt, stars. Thank you, Tony. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Tony. Thank Indeed. you, Red Band. It's, all, it's nice to be back here. I haven't been back here since January. And January was such a fun show. And you, you guys were so nice because you pushed the shit out of Windy City Heat. And I've never seen numbers move it in anything really, I've ever done. <laughs> it really did. It was fun for me. I even kept a little bit of an eye on it. It was fun to watch the bump. I looked, yeah, I looked it at, really was. Yeah. And uh, that was very nice. And I was like, as a matter of fact, I'll be making a deal right now. I've never done this on any show that I've ever been on tonight when this is over i'm going to select one woman in this audience and make love to her <laughs> oh wow what a lot there's a oh i see a couple ladies that are who's getting their giant hole eaten by me tonight that is a good question who is going to get their giant hole eaten by don here tonight <laughs> Uh, Don, I'm so happy to have you. I'm sure since it was just in January that you were on the show, you remember that we have a band on this show. Yes, I do. And every single episode, they commit to being different characters. They've been in a different sealed off green room getting ready before this show. We Can never I know say this before you bring them out? Yeah, I'm sorry sure. to interrupt you because it's your fucking show and you're doing a good job. You're great. Hello, Red Band. You can do whatever uh, you but want. But you know what? When you said we don't know, I saw them backstage. Mm. And uh, they said, whatever you do, don't say anything. So I'm going to shut my mouth because I don't want that girl that I'm going to be making love to upset with me. That's right. You want that giant hole nice and ready for you. <laughs> with that said, let's find out what they are tonight. Maybe it's uh, brand new characters that we've never seen before. Maybe it's the return of some of our favorite characters that we have seen. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the best damn band in the land. It's the Kill Tony Band. Jetski, Jesse Johnson, Chroma, Chris, and Joelberg, Joel Jimenez. <laughs> Wow, I have no idea what this is. Wow, I don't think I've ever been this confused before. 
about what the band actually is. I just selected the girl I'll be making love to. <laughs> uh oh, we found the lucky lady. <laughs> Jeremiah won't like that because I'm his sister, Phyllis Watkins. Whoa, Welcome the return the- of Jeremiah's sister, Phyllis Watkins. And Tony, this week I brought the whole family. Oh yeah, these are more Watkins. Yep, we are. We were here to film a special coming out <laughs> on December eighth on Amazon Prime. Wow. Family reunion, and we're all we stayed in Hollywood because we were having so much fun here. Uh, wow, my goodness, uh, what an incredible plug for the Watkins Jeremiah. Family. Yeah, the entire Watkins. What's your name, Young Watkins? Hey, what's up? My name is uh, Gary Gary Maya Watkins. Jeremiah Watkins. Yeah, Gary Maya, and you know, I'm just I'm really really excited about you know Jeremiah's success and everything. Even though, you know, I was the one who actually told him he should play saxophone and everything. I even got him into comedy. It's no big deal or anything, but yeah, good job, Jeremiah. Wow, guys. we're finding out a lot about Gary Maya Watkins. No, it's, I'm really excited about a success, Tony. <laughs> you seem a little bit bitter. Are, you're his brother? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I just got him into comedy, you know. It's no big deal. He, he wanted just to be, you know, a, a musician and everything, but I was like... Don, what do you think about this? Comedy. I just... All I keep thinking about is Patrick Swayze's brother when I see you. That's all. You, you look a little like Jeremiah, but there's just something that not as Jeremiah. But I wish you nothing but luck. Oh, man. Derek Swayze, right? I get that a lot. I look like Derek Swayze. We all got nose jobs. <laughs> And I'm really interested to find out how this young man behind me on the drums fits into the Watkins family. Uh, what's your name, sir? Joaquin Watkins. <laughs> I just, Tony, I just took an Ancestry.com test. Blood in, blood out, 100% Watkins. Wow. I'm here to promote my, co- my cousin's fucking first special. How are you related to these? Uh, I don't know. That's Ancestry.com for 100% blood. <laughs> My goodness, that is incredible. What do you guys think of Joaquin Watkins being in your family? Blood, homie. Blood, homie. (laughs) Blood brother. Jeremiah Watkins (laughs) performs his first one-hour special family rejunction in an intimate comedy club setting. (laughs) Be a fly on the wall as Jeremiah gets heckled by his mom, works out the crowd, shares personal stories of dating (laughs) and marriage, and watch his ridiculous physicality and characters all while his family, that's me, okay, hometown friends surround him with exclusive family, family interviews. This is one of the most unique and raw specials you'll ever see. I love it. Joaquin Watkins is here. Jeremiah Watkins, Phyllis Watkins, the great Don Barris, Red Band and the Soundboard. So let's start the fucking show. You guys ready for this? We're Before li- you start, can I can, can I just say one thing? Yeah. I happen to see Gino out in the audience, one of your sponsors. Yeah. Gino, all, every time I see him, it is nice because every time I see him, he gives me a joint and he doesn't have to. Gino, my man. Hello We there. love Gino. Absolute kill Tony royalty without a doubt. And uh, so let's just jump right into it. To kick off tonight's show, because we like to start things with a fucking bang around here, I present to you the longest tenured regular in Kill Tony history, and also a guy that in the Kill Tony part of the Comedy Store documentary was featured more than both Tony Hinchcliffe and Brian Redband, guys that have done the show for tens of thousands of hours. <laughs> but this Or is the sh- band. This is show business I'm for just you. Rogan's producer. <laughs> Did you, is that you what they said? That? No. Tom Segura kept on going. And then I started my podcast with Rogan's producer. <laughs> what the fuck? It's, the sad part is that you can he, you can see his lips say Brian Redband oh, and yeah, the, yeah. in a different voice. It's Rogan. just like it's Rogan's producer. Yeah. All right. Ladies hey, and gentlemen, can I just, up, before you go oh, on, oh, okay. I, I hate to again, you're the host, but you said something that I have to touch base with in that documentary of the comedy store when it came to talking about you. Did I say red band? Or you did sure I? did. I sure you did. You and Joe were I too. Gave. Thank you, buddy. No <laughs> problem. Yeah. Mr. Don Berry. They, know, used, they used three videos of mine. Didn't credit any of them. But thanks a lot, Don. You wait, probably wait, had something. <laughs> Look, I think it was beautifully done. No better part to feature Kill Tony than after mentioning uh, the Argus Hamilton Tonight Show. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, that's so fitting. Have we have we filled theaters around the globe with a show that started in the belly room? Sure, but why really why really cover that at all when you can? Why would you? Yeah, when you can cover the, uh, I think the Argus show is uh, wildly successful. Have you been on the Argus show? Yeah, yeah, I have. How many? What times? is what is Ar- Argus Hamilton? 
Argus Hamilton. Ar- Argus Hamilton. We don't have this yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going to start it off with a guy heavily featured in the Comedy Store documentary. He's absolutely a wild man. He's one of our favorite comedians of all time and always, always entertaining as hell. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the big red machine, William Montgomery. <laughs> I know that. I know that dude. Here it is, sixty seconds uninterrupted from William Montgomery. Uh, do I look like the kind of guy that would kill a journalist? Uh, do I look like the kind of guy that would do business with Hunter Biden? Uh, quick joke for you people: What do you call a woman driver? Uh, beheaded. Uh, What do I call it when I throw my wife off of a mountain for not birthing a male heir? Uh, A flying carpet. My wife is so ugly I couldn't sell her to a human trafficking organization. Where in the world is Carmen Sandiego? Hopefully not in my country because you'll never see her again. Uh, Tony spends more time in a sand trap than a Saudi drug dealer. It's a golf joke. Not fair. Not fair. <laughs> That's all I got. That's unbelievable. What a performance. What a performance. What a way to kick off tonight's show. William Montgomery delivering jokes as a... How would you describe this character? What are you here tonight? Uh, an Arab sheik. An Arab sheik. Heck yeah. And uh, was that perhaps your Halloween costume? It was. I spent uh, $300 on it. <laughs> My goodness. He, he looks like the Virgin Mary if she wasn't a virgin. <laughs> he looks like the Virgin Harry. <laughs> <laughs> the Virgin Harry. That was Jeremiah Watkins. The Virgin right Gary. There. All right. Um, virgin Scary. What, what did you do for Halloween dress like that? Where'd you go? Um, I actually did a show. David was on it. Um, I How do- was it? I dominated him in the show. David did pretty poorly. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? It was a little disappointing. Oh, we're to gonna see. have to follow up with David about this in a little bit. <laughs> what made you pick an Arab sheik for Halloween? I don't know. I've always been intrigued by the Muslim religion. Yeah. What about that? That religion intrigues you? I don't know. Just all the Muhammad stuff. I'm really a f- big fan. You're Jeez. a big fan of Muhammad. Correct. In what way? Like, why? Why are you a big fan of Muhammad? Uh, he used to eat a bunch of deer meat, and I'm a big fan of deer meat. What, have you ever eaten deer meat? I actually, I uh, was on the phone with my dad earlier this week, and I told him I was getting uh, uh, Indian food, and he was like, what are you talking about, deer meat? <laughs> it's like, no. <laughs> like the uh, dot type of Indian, not the feather type of Indian. I was shocked. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about, deer meat? William, did you know our produ- <laughs> did you know our producer's name is David Deermeat? I love David Deermeat. <laughs> Number one producer, man. <laughs> David Deermeat. <laughs> David Deermeat. Oh my god. I love David Deermeat. Also, you look like I could bum a camel cigarette off you. You got one? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> It is an interesting look. So you ended up doing a show for Halloween. Did you dress up with someone? Did you go to that show with a date or something? Uh, yes, with uh, my lady friend. With your girlfriend. What was she dressed up as? <laughs> <laughs> what was she dressed up as, William? Uh, didn't dress up as anything. Whoa. So that's, this seems like she seems like as much fun as we've always heard uh, she we is. You probably shouldn't get into this subject. Oh, I don't know why this Because she listens to the show just to find things to complain to you really about. We really shouldn't get every into single, this subject. Every single episode. Please. You get in, you get let's in not get into this subject. Because <laughs> you're going to get in Please. trouble. Please. Let's stop. I love Tony. this character, the Saudi guy who's afraid of his wife. <laughs> Ah, Jolbert. Uh, Don Barris is here. Do I know your girlfriend? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. You have may you ever... have. Uh, you may recognize her by her giny. Hold on. You could. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I Hard didn't know. S- Congratulations. Yeah, Congratulations. Congratulations. Do you yeah, think, think she was into much. your costume? Did you guys role play at all? A lot of role playing. Yeah. What kind of? Uh, what kind of? Uh, things did you do 
a lot of knocking on the door, trying to get inside of the bedroom, not being allowed to get inside of the bedroom, whole bunch of knocking. More like uh, a lot of cinnamon roll play. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? You're fat, dog. <laughs> You know, we heard that last week that uh, William got so drunk that he shit himself, and uh, it fell on the floor. No, I didn't. We don't need to talk about this one here. <laughs> yeah, we do. I had no idea about this. This is one of the perks of not listening God. to Brothers in Cursive, is that I find out all the, the, the best highlights, like this, live <laughs> on the spot, and you get to see my genuine <laughs> reaction to it. So you had a heavy, serious drinking problem. I started problem, drinking again a little bit. And then you took a few weeks off drinking, or at least you said that you were while coming in here yeah. sweating profusely. Uh, I'm hot as shit in this right now. I bet. I'm sweating bad right now. I bet you are. You're, you're completely hot. in character. You're a real Arab sheik. It's so hot. explain it's to us how you ended up shitting your pants. Or, did, I mean, hopefully it uh, wasn't during Halloween because you're not really wearing any pants. I was wearing this outfit. It took me a while to take it off. Wow. Um, to think that you even went to the extent of smelling like an Arab man, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. He, uh, he went trick-or-treating, definitely looking for 72 virgins. <laughs> <laughs> what does that fucking mean? Explain to us how you shit your pants, William. This is great, I great podcasting. Uh, uh, I was close to the toilet. My body was ready to doo-doo. I did not have my shorts When you say off. close to the toilet, what are we talking about Probably here? a foot in the, away. In the living room? Uh, no, probably a foot away. I was looking at the toilet. You got to point your ass towards Mecca, fool. <laughs> so <laughs> what were you doing? Why were you looking at the toilet? I was trying to take the stuff off. What stuff? And I couldn't. His, my uh, clothes. Outfit. Oh, your outfit. He's been wearing that for a week. I've been wearing this a week. Wow. Okay. And then you're trying to take off the outfit, but you feel like And I couldn't, out. and doo-doo came out. Where did it land? In my shorts and also on the floor. One of the <laughs> pairs of shorts that you got here on this show? Yeah, a new pair of shorts. <laughs> Do you, did you wash them or did you throw them out? I washed them. Oh, disgusting. Yeah, you just throw Jesus. them away. When so you have I'm actually wearing them right now. William, we got you 40 <laughs> pairs of free shorts. <laughs> well, I found my favorite pair, and I'm wearing them right now. Wow. You are soaking wet with sweat right it now. It is. This I'm is... hot as shit. I'm just waiting for you to tell me to get off. I am hot <laughs> as fuck. <laughs> I'm waiting to get Tony, off. Be, before you let him off, <laughs> I have never heard anybody shit in their pants before. I know nobody here has. So please tell more. Yeah, so after you shit your pants, did you, were you, did you like yell for your girlfriend? Yeah, his or? girl actually helped him out. Right? Wow. wow. Yeah, it was really nice. Yeah, what did she do exactly? <laughs> Lord uh, knows she loves being in shitty situations. So. <laughs> By the way, I do know his girlfriend. I now remember her. Oh, look at that. Perfect. It's all coming back to Don. Uh, she once helped Don when he pooped his pants <laughs> once. <laughs> No, so what did, what did she do to help you? Uh, got my my pants, my boxers, um, wiped the doo-doo off of me. She in wiped it off of you? In the shower. I was screaming in the shower, <laughs> get your fucking hands off this of me. That sounds like the worst way to propose I've ever heard, man. <laughs> like, dig through it. There's a ring in there, bitch. <laughs> this poor woman. This poor woman. I think she likes it. <laughs> I, I know. I do feel kind of bad after everything, after all the shit talk. Let me I ask you this. Bad. Here's a, here's a I final genuinely question. genuinely feel bad. Oh, before you ask yeah. the final, can I ask yeah, the question? Absolutely. You can ask the final question. No, of question, course. You go right ahead. I, have you ever done anything else this close to embarrassing your girlfriend? Anything else like shitting in your pants? Anything else? Maybe masturbating and wiping it on her Yeah, all kinds, of, all kinds of stuff, I think, but I don't know. All right, now uh, would be a good time to tell us. Go right ahead. No, I don't know. This is not. This isn't a good time. I this think the, the worst feels time. it's a good time. I, you, you, you can guys tell think by their. So? <laughs> <laughs> I think that everybody wants to hear it. I, I'm kidding. I don't even know what I would. I don't know what I would say. Wow, I've never seen you this stumped before. I Norm, don't normally know what I would say. Improvisational guru. <laughs> and uh, it appears as though we have found the Achilles heel of this Arab you sheep. have. Here's the question that I had. <clears throat> yeah. Because you've been dating this girl a while. Very, what we would describe as a tumultuous relationship. Uh, 
Oh, Ooh, Don's Ooh. getting a Don's getting a phone it's call. It's William's girl right now calling Don. <laughs> <laughs> Can you please stop fucking oh, bringing God. me up during pancakes? <laughs> oh God. Okay, so here's my question for you, William. <laughs> yeah, if your what? girlfriend, who you've been yes. with now for what eight, ten months, a year, how long you guys been together? I don't know. Year, year and a half. Year maybe. and a half. Boy, does time fly. Let me ask you this: What's the if, question? if she shit her pants a foot away from the toilet and, and opened the door and was like, William, I shit my pants. I need your help. What, how would you react to that? I would uh, slam the bathroom door shut. I would get in my fucking car and I would leave. <laughs> there you go. I'd That's what I thought. Perfect That's answer. That. That's it. That's a way out right there. I'd Ladies and gentlemen, to... the great Thank William you. Montgomery, everybody. There he goes. Hey. That's Portugal hey. the Man, right? What? God, that's, that's Portugal the Man, right? It's that, yeah. yeah, it is. It is. It sounds you know, so uh, good. We actually, yeah, really, it really does. It sounds so great. It's not overbearing. It's not at a ridiculously high pitch for the instrument being played. It's completely in tune. Hey, she's still got it. She's a real Watkins. Uh, a fun fact about Portugal, uh, the man, is that we um, it, we sold out a theater in Portland a few months ago, and we actually had the lead guitarist for Portugal, Eric the Hawk. man. Yeah, yeah. Um, shout out to Eric Hawk. In the band, he joined the band. So imagine how crazy Portland went when we go joining the band. A very Tony, Mister Tony, what what do you think about me starting a band called Mexico, the man? Uh, what do you think about it? How about Chico in the man? Shout out to Freddie Prince, also featured in the Comedy Store documentary. <laughs> you know what? Let's run some of your band name ideas uh, after the show. Okay, sounds good. I see you in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Joaquin Watkins. You're welcome, Mr. Tony. <laughs> Okay, I'm pulling my first uh, name out of the bucket for this episode. 60 seconds uninterrupted. Going to... Ooh, for the first time ever in Kill Tony history. Make some noise for Fernando Perez, everyone. Here we go. We are going to find out who is Fernando Perez right now, live on the number one live podcast in the world, Kill Tony. Here is Fernando Perez. And here is Fernando Perez. Uh, well, I feel like if I knew who Wolfgang Puck was, I could make myself come off as a lot smarter than I am. Uh, I'm a little too white for the Mexican kids. Honestly, a little too white for uh, the white kids too sometimes. My favorite saying for reference is Jiminy Crickets. I'm uh, very afraid of disappointing Joel right now. <laughs> uh, I like to think I'm a people pleaser. Uh, a lot of racists call me one of the good ones. It's... One of my highlights. Uh, I've got the ethnic equivalent of the N word pass, equality. It's great. I've uh, never done heroin, but I do like needles. I wonder if spoon collectors have any irrational fears of heroin addicts. Uh, my grandpa used to say, never do what you love for free, but how could I pass up being one of the few people allowed to dress in clan robes and shoot firearms in a school campus? Educational theater is amazing. There you go, Fernando Perez. Wow, Fernando, I must say you have the delivery of a book smart human being. Thank you. I haven't <laughs> been on a stage in like over a year. Am I right? Are you very book smart? Yeah. You got great great grades your entire life. Am I correct? Yes, I was in the geek program as a child. In the what program? The gifted and talented education. There you go. Oh, wow. Boy, do I know how to spot these motherfuckers. Huh? This guy Don't looks like Mexican Dracula. <laughs> yeah, he does. This is the second time we've had this fool on the show. Oh, Mexican. you've been on this show before? No, no, no. We met Mexican Dracula in San Francisco. I meant like as a character. All right. Oh, okay. Do you, Mr. Tony. Mexican Dracula is... Uh, Allergic to cilantro instead of garlic. <laughs> okay. Uh, Don Barris, what do you think about this young buck? I don't know if any person that you've had on the show has ever said this to one of the performers, but I don't think I've ever wanted to beat the fuck out of someone more than I want to beat the fuck out. I've never wanted to have uh, someone beat the fuck out of me like that much before. You'd be honored if Don Barris beat you up? Let's do it. All right. Here we go for the first time in Guild Tony history. 
Don Barris is about Don, to don't beat do it, up don't one do of it, the don't contestants. Do it. Oh, he's sitting you know back what? down. I can't. I you can't. You can't because, because I have a ding dong show. I can't hurt my voice. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever gotten into a fight before, Fernando? A few. What happens there? Are you usually getting bullied by somebody? Like, hey, what's up, you smart little fucking Mexican? Uh, no, I used to run with a few bad people, and so we'd uh, get... Ooh, bad place. people. Bad what are we people. talking about? B's and C's on their report cards? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't return their books at the library? <laughs> a few rebels. No, uh, like my sophomore year on, I used to sneak out a lot and like, go to parties and stuff. What kind of parties? Like chess and alcohol. Algebra. <laughs> I'm going to move my knight to spot number L7. <laughs> no, I quit chess club in third grade, and then I uh, found weed. Ooh, you Whoa, are bad, you found eh? weed? <laughs> and then you returned it? You found weed in third grade? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, officer. I found this, and I just want to do the right thing. Well, what did you do with the weed that you found? Put it under a microscope to study its medicinal benefits? The trichomes look amazing, <laughs> huh? No, no. I had substance abuse problems for a while. Like oh, what? Shit. Marijuana and what? Uh, Coke, alcohol. Coke really? alcohol? How like Coca-Cola? Yeah, no. I, <laughs> How did you get it? put it in like Splenda. You got into cocaine? For a bit. How did the, how Hell old yeah. were you? I was like 17, 18. Oh, he's Latino. So that's Me young. too, dog. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> so how did this happen? And, and how, how wild did your t- youth get? It's crazy oh. to think that <laughs> you've done cocaine and I haven't. I know. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. No, I'll explain it, Tony. When you grow up, you're insecure. You know, these chemicals give you, they, they let you escape your inner self, dog, like your mind. Like, if you're worried, like, cocaine makes you like a god, eh? And you drink the, you drink that fucking Dos Equis, homie, and you're fucking, okay. you're the best. I've been there, dog. I've thank been there, thank dog. Thank you, Joaquin. Thank you. Tell us more about how you got into this. What's your first time doing cocaine look like? T- take us back to the night. Uh, first time, I was with one of my friends and uh-huh. another friend of his that I just met. Yeah, what are you guys doing? It's always We're, three people. Just, hold on. Hold on, Joaquin. Just relax first. Let's get, let's get a little bit into this story. Okay, so you're with a few friends. What are you guys doing? Uh, so it was my first time doing it. My friend's like, he does a lot of drugs, or he used to at least, until uh-huh. he got sober. He used to be fun. But what are you guys uh, doing? You're hanging we're out. hanging out. We're just at hanging apartment. out. Could you get a heart on? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so you're hanging out at an apartment with a couple buddies, and one of them busts out what a bag of yeah, cocaine, bag and a key. And then, and then, how did you know what to do? He showed you. Yeah, he's like, "Hey, just sniff." And then what happened? It's... You sniffed, and then what happened? And then I got high. How did you feel? It was weird. Like I, I didn't like it that much at first, and then I was like, "This just feels like normal, but better." Yeah. And then. It, yeah, I just what did you do? What did you do uh, to enjoy your buzz? Did you get one of those like uh, crossword puzzle books and just go <laughs> haywire on it? You gotta try coke. Tony. <laughs> <laughs> did hey, you talk? Hey a lot? Billy, what's a seven-letter uh, word that it means uh, racquetball? Okay, go no, ahead. I was I was pretty subdued. I, it was weird because coke's supposed to make you like jittery, but it just made me like sit down and want to listen to music. So I did. What kind of music? Anything really. Come on, what did you listen to? Take yourself back to the moment. Tell us the truth. Show tunes. <laughs> what? Show tunes. <laughs> Is that true? Or you yeah, Wow. Yeah. What kind of music? Show tunes. I would have guessed Los Lobos or something like that. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Joaquin, you know about Los Lobos. Yeah, La Bamba fool. <laughs> did a rock cover of that shit, homie. They're in all kinds of movies. Fernando, what's your love life like? You seem like the kind of guy that Whoa, Whoa, married, married with children? No, just married. No, no children yet. No. You're, Can you get hard dude. now? Uh-uh. <laughs> what was how, that? how long you been married for? Uh, just over a year. Okay, how long you been with this girl? Like three years. Okay, what Since made you? That get... was two. <laughs> what does she do? Uh, she's a genealogist. A genealogist. Oh, she genealogists studies, love to fuck, yeah, man. Just so you know. oh, that's who did my Ancestry.com test. Well, she found out my genes were 100% walkinks. <laughs> okay. Uh, so she's a genealogist. And what do you do for work? Uh, well, because I, I lived here, and then I moved to Utah, and I worked for Capital One there. Oh, I shouldn't say that. Oh, Capital One. Uh, I represent. I love yeah. Capital One. Then, it's my favorite credit card. Ew. Good. You don't I'm like not, Capital One? Fuck no. Are you, you Mormon? Mean? I mean, it's a MasterCard. Wait a minute. I you, like Chase. I'm a Chase. The number's guy. 44312. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, I have to know. You, do they sponsor you? Capital One? <laughs> yeah. What's in your wallet? <laughs> yeah, we've got a big poster of him up Good in the Good point. Office. 
What'd you say? No, I said we have a big poster of you up in the office. Yes, absolutely. And I have a big poster of you in my office. Uh, so, Fernando, um, let's talk about this love life situation because you seem like you would be a fucking thoroughbred in the bedroom. What's, uh, what's some of your go-to <laughs> sexual maneuvers that you like to do? Uh, I actually haven't had sex in over a year. You haven't had sex in over Pelvic a year? wall issues. You have what? No, she has pelvic wall issues. Pelvic wall issues? Oh, she has issues? a small pussy? Yeah, it's oh. like really painful. I, I want to guess. You probably have like a big ass dick, right? No, I know. Thank you, Joaquin. That was a perfect time to ask <laughs> yeah. that question. So uh, is she Latino as well? No, she's Aryan as heck. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, my God. And pelvic wall issues. So you're a Mexican that's having to deal with... Uh, wall. All right, forget you, it. Wh- and you're mar- even, you are even. married right now? That was a good yeah. joke. Yeah. Really? How do you relieve your tension, Dude, let's say? Is she let you do it in the butt? Uh, Does she have butt wall issues? <laughs> <laughs> I think somebody should call Jeremiah, tell him what his sister just said. Yeah, tell him he's fired. Uh, so is it, is, that is a great question. Do you put it in her butt? No. No. Does she give you a lot of blowjobs? Yeah. A lot? Yeah. Every day? Not every day? Not every day. Once a week? No. Once every three weeks? Uh, oh, 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 so you said once Is she here right now? I'd like to see this happen right now if we could. So uh, let me, no, she's in Utah. I have a she's, really, I have a re- I'm sorry, Don. I really have to get this out because this is so interesting to me. You've been with her for three years. Mm-hmm. Pelvic wall issues. Uh, you married her a year ago. Pelvic wall issues. Were they a thing three years ago, or did this start right after you got married? Well, we didn't have sex until we were married. Oh Are you serious? God. What yeah. the f- You're serious. Yeah. Oh, I want to beat so this So you married... Ass. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. This is wild. Did she tell you she had pelvic wall issues before? She didn't know. She hadn't had sex. Oh, my gosh. You, didn't you ever throw a finger in her, Fernando? No. You Good never. Sh- you never put a finger in her vagina before marrying her? He's a fucking nerd. Ease up on him. My God. Does the vagina have a dick in it? Like no. coming out? Okay. Red band. <laughs> Can I just say, Tony, you said through a finger. Well, yeah. I As mean. if he's pitching a dedo. <laughs> Let me throw this finger in you. Curveball. This is a mind-bogglingly compelling story. Is, there, is, any, is there anything to fix it? I know a girl that had that also, but I, I don't know who she is anymore. But... Uh, is there a way to like they could scoop some out? Or? No, they, they don't scoop okay, out, Red Band, you're out of control right Red now. Red Band, this isn't ice cream, fool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, can't but, scoop uh, everything. I'll okay. take a double scoop. So let me ask you this, Fernando. You're you're on your wedding. You're <laughs> you're you're you just got married. You're having your wedding night. You probably are already coming inside of your pants, thinking about having sex with your genealogist wife. And then, so what happens? You guys get to the, would you guys get a hotel that night or something, right? Yeah. 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 What was that? What kind of hotel was it? Uh, it was a smaller hotel. It was just close by because we didn't want to go far. Wow. Were you a virgin when you got married? No. No. Oh, yeah. You remember those days? Hell yeah. Yeah, I had those days. Okay. So then what? You guys get undressed at some point. You have a couple glasses of wine or something like that, right? You had some champagne. No. No, you didn't even drink. No. You guys were like, let's just do this. You get butt naked, both of you. And then what's the next move? You you go condom or no condom? Uh, I, th- I think we did no condom. She has an implant. And oh, then... she has an implant and tight walls. Like, what? what's the point of her having an implant if she can't have sex? Uh, she was She's preparing. a cyborg. <laughs> she was preparing for it, right? Like, yeah. 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 Wow, what a what a, a almost girl. cool girl to marry. It, yeah, is there anything good about this girl? Can you say one nice thing about her? Yeah, she's a. Uh, yeah, you couldn't smart. think of one thing, could you? <laughs> oh, that's my a long pause. God, <laughs> she's got a good finance rate. Wow, Fernando, you might just be the only person that we have on the show for the rest of the show. This is so fucking interesting. We're at twelve minutes. Let's see his dick. Pull out your dick. Let me see if that thing looks good. Jeremiah's not here. We can't go backstage. It's okay. Insane. So, Fernando, so you go no condom. She has the IUD, no, right? The, like the implant in her arm. Oh, the implant in the arm. Yeah. Okay, the little, fucking, the little fucking baby Terminator. So, yeah. 
then what? You do you did at this point? Do you do something? Perhaps some foreplay or something? You you oh, guys yeah. make out and then what do you do? What's your next move? We like took a shower before. Ooh, you both. Oh, you, wait, wait, wait! Wow. Stop, stop, stop! Fuck. Everybody, Look, stop! Look, verify everybody. the fact I'm rock hard. That Go is, ahead. It, I, Don's <laughs> cock is throbbing right now. It looks like there is just a, a, an entire heart transplant about to take place over here. So. Hold on, <laughs> the shower. Why do I feel like you guys took separate showers on no, this? No, no, it was uh, it together. Was the same shower, yeah. And then you guys were like holding onto each other by like the waist or something. Yeah, it was like a yeah, conga like, line to the bed. What? Like, <laughs> I said, yeah, it was like a conga line to the bed. But no, we got out of the shower and then foreplay and shit. You're what like, kind oh, of foreplay? I want to know so about wet. the foreplay. Hold on, Joaquin. I need to know. Der- I need details. Details. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, so. I oh, mean, that was, I don't even remember too much. You though. fucking remember? This is the one time you almost <laughs> got laid were by your wife. Were you guys drunk? Were you guys drunk? No, no. Completely <laughs> were you drunk. coked she's up? Mormon, Would you bring so. back the coke for this one? <laughs> yeah, a little white wedding. <laughs> no, no. She's Mormon, so it's... Nice not day not to Mormon. start again. <laughs> so what she, happens now? What kind of foreplay, Fernando? What are we uh, talking about here? Just sniff her thing. I was on the body and... Na- do you say nails on the body? Mouths on the body. <laughs> oh, okay, good. And then <laughs> we started with fingering. <laughs> and then yeah, kissing. His mouth Hell on yeah. the body is yeah. so much hotter. Than yeah. Yeah. Kiss my stuff, eh? Kiss, Kiss me right mouth. there. Kiss my yeah. belly button, eh? Hitting Lump- that legal. belly button. Lick it. Mouths yeah. <laughs> 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 on the body. <laughs> You know, it's sick. Oh, yeah. This is like, this is like uh, a, a giant Before four-year-old. the wedding, were you actively engaged with other women? Did you have sex with a lot of women? Uh, before we were engaged, before, yeah. How, before, how like, many would you we say? Together. How many would you say? At least 20. Wow, oh, Fernando. Fuck. Fernando. <sighs> fuck, yeah. yeah. This guy has I a big dick. I, I don't believe him, man. Absolutely. He works at Capital One. He's got a fucking... All, these, all the nerds have the biggest dicks, man. Girls the, think it's the cool guy, but it's not. It's this guy. <laughs> The only bankers with bigger dicks than Capital One is Wells Fargo because they have those fucking horse cocks. <laughs> those Clydesdale fucking that. meat hooks. <laughs> anyway, so uh, here what you are, fuck? foreplay, mouths on bodies. When you say mouths on bodies, what exactly the fuck are you talking about? So a lot of like sucking nipples and... <laughs> <laughs> keep going, keep going, dude. Yeah, keep going. Uh, and then... <laughs> Oh, this, is this, mic. <laughs> this is this is the sound of you guys sucking each other's nipples. Uh, no, I don't like having my nipples sucked. But, oh, uh, you didn't have your nipples sucked? No, it's you not sucked on her like nipples it? though, so she doesn't yeah. have sensitive nipples. Was she moaning? Was she enjoying it? Yeah. Okay, then, then what happened? Then you go the a fingers. little bit farther south, right? Yeah. You're went Mexican. For the fingers, it worked with the one, and then she was like, "Put it in." And I was like, "All right." And then wait, it didn't work. hold on. Wait, we went from nipples to put it in real fast. Okay. What happened? What happened there? So nipples. after that, then went down to eating her out, uh-huh. and then yeah. went for the finger. The finger uh-huh. was all right. Finger, one finger. Yeah. Okay. How long do you think you were eating her out for? Like seven minutes. Seven minutes. Seven. That's a very That's specific guess. That's a good I have number. A question about that. Yeah. Did you pull the classy move where you put the finger in, you work it a little bit, you take it out, hold it up, and then suck it? Did you do that? <laughs> Did you? No, I. I it's a good move for anybody, that, no. for the kids out there. Well, thank you, Donald. Keep that in mind. So there you go. She says, put it in. The moment of truth happens. You take your raw dog little fucking genius fucking uh, (laughs) teacher's pointer stick, and you prepare it for insertion, and then what happens? And then she says, ow, and I'm like, you good? And then we stop, and I was like, let's try it again. So we did, and then it didn't work. Yeah. So we're like, what a right, fucking let's... life you've got the rest of your fucking <laughs> life, dude. <laughs> now, can he like stretch it out? Can he get like put you know get like a trainer? You know, like... yeah. There's exercises. So she yeah. she goes to a physical therapist that like teaches. Like, her she fuck goes to a physical therapist oh, to get fucked. Oh fuck? my <laughs> god! Does anyone want to tell him or are we? His name is Demontre. <laughs> no, her physical therapist is a woman, and I go there with her. It's oh, you go there with her. Yeah. Demontre Joaquin. Yeah, he's on 172nd Street. <laughs> uh, the nearest cross street is Martin Luther King. How how many how many times a week does she go see this physical therapist? I think it's like what well, twice a month that we go. Oh, you go together. Oh, you, you watch this thing. You're. I a think you mean dude. twice yeah. a month. Like what? What's like? What is it that they do? They, does she like sit on a missile and they, they just push her down every day? <laughs> no. So, oh my God, <laughs> Doctor Redman, Doctor Redman. 
Another episode of Dr. Red Band. Wow. Is that what they do? They sit on a missile? <laughs> no, they have like exercises where you put a finger in and you just like leave it there for like five minutes. Does the physical therapist put the finger in? Yeah, she has like gloves and shit. And wow. Then, oh, it's a she. Yeah. Wow, lucky yeah. you. Is her name Pusha She? <laughs> You ever think about putting your mouth on the body of the physical therapist? No. Is no. she hot? Is the physical therapist hot? No. Oh, you're you, lying. You, <laughs> oh, you're not allowed to say if she's hot. Wow. Well, Fernando, I'm going to be honest with you, man. It has been... You have to sign up again. I have a literally 426 more questions to ask you about your wife's super tiny vagina. Um uh, this has been an 18-minute long interview. One of the wow, that might uh, be the, the longest. One almost. of the longest yeah. interviews of all time in the history of the show, and I, we have barely scratched the surface. I mean, I went straight into what's your love life like. I believe that was basically the second yeah. question, and here we are, 17 minutes later. Um, so please sign up, come back, write jokes. Your jokes were. Uh, the least interesting part of this entire thing. This is actually a good thing to talk about. Yeah. yeah. Maybe switch your wife out and say it's an ex-girlfriend or something, but yeah. Dude, I mean, you'd have, you'd have everybody eating out of the palm of your hand if you talked about this and stuff And think about stage. what a pathetic life you have, for God's <laughs> sakes. <laughs> well, Fernando, you'll, you'll always be welcome inside these walls here at the Comedy <laughs> Store. So thanks for coming by. Fernando Perez, everybody. There he goes. Hell yeah. Absolutely. T- Tony, what do you think I just about want all to this, say, Don? In the audience right now, a member of the Ding Dong Show, one of my best people I know, Mary Jane. Hello, oh, Mary. Hey, Mary, Mary Jane. Mary Jane. What's up, sweet Mary Jane? You want to wow. come, come on stage and do, do a bow? Yeah, come come wave to the people out there. Ladies and gentlemen, the, uh, Mary Jane, the everybody. Universe. Yeah, sure. Sure. Uh, you can just come well, up. Where come I'm from, we call her Mari, Marijuana. Here we go. There you go. You want to you wanna point that at her real quick? General Bogus? Look at that. Stunning, beautiful, from the Ding Dong Show. The Mary great Jane. Mary Jane, everyone. Which, can I just say, she's also the reason I said that is because at 1030 tonight, you know, we used to follow you guys, when, the days when you were just the little belly room guys, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and we used to follow your show right after. Well, I've got to run back right after this and do our ding dong show, so that's on tonight. Yeah, what, that. what, how are you doing it nowadays? What's the format? Right, right now, I, we don't have a club because the club is closed. I don't know if you noticed that, yeah. but uh, we're doing... Uh, a weekly at the exact same time, ten thirty. We're doing a uh, Zoom show. Oh, great! Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right, uh. <laughs> all right. Back to the bucket we go. Let's get another stranger up here and see what happens. I mean, good luck following the stylings of Fernando Perez. No one will, and I don't want to beat his ass. Is bad now. His life is pathetic. Oh, this is very <laughs> exciting, everyone. Uh, this young lady is uh, has permission to come here the second week of every single month because she is our horoscope correspondent and she's going to do a brand new minute for us it is christy belich everyone here she comes here is christy belich so uh, my day job is an astrologer and uh, this year in 2020 i keep getting a lot of text messages that are like Hey, Christy, what do I do about business this year? And my suggestion in 2020 is just hoeing. All you got to do is hoe yourself out, put yourself behind a paywall, get those axe sheets clapping, get some unrefined coconut oil, and keep it moving, you know? Get a fucking uh, 20% off promo stamp tattooed to your left ass cheek. And just hoe your fucking self out. Don't go to college. Don't get a degree. Don't waste your money. And in fact, when your grandkids ask you one day what you did during the great recession pandemic of 2020, you can say that your pussy perpetuated the economy for the entire year to come. Wow. Look at that. Exactly 59 seconds. A work of art, Christy Bellich. Very she has fun. a 
she has a wonderful attitude towards the pandemic. Heck yeah, absolutely. And I'll bet you anything, she has no problem with her vaginal walls. Am I correct, Christy? Well, it's so weird because that's the magic of the comedy store is what got me into comedy was pelvic floor dysfunction. So that's very interesting. Shout out Beyond Basics Physical Therapy in Manhattan. I appreciate it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. You're kidding, right? Dusty Ann Miller. Thank you okay, so much. Okay, stop naming people's <laughs> names. Uh, hold on a second. Are you being serious? Absolutely. You had what? 100%. You had the same thing. I have you had the same thing? Yeah, I have something called pelvic floor dysfunction, and um, it's from something called endometriosis. Well, it's coinciding with endometriosis, and I had to get surgery for it. Uh, back on your vagina? Um, it, in my uterus, yeah, because right. um, endometriosis is an outgrowth of your uterus, and it caused... Okay, red band. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But I, but I have tarot cards, too. If Did that surgery know. hurt? Uh, the surgery didn't hurt. The pelvic floor dysfunction hurts a lot, especially when you have, like, a Puerto Rican boyfriend, you know? Oh, oh my goodness gracious. That, Normally, that's, that's, Puerto Ricans are great at uh, cleaning the floors. <laughs> Oh, come on, and they, people. Right in the corners, you know? They Jesus go right in the corners. Christ. Uh, so pelvic floor and pelvic walls, is that the same thing? Are we covering the same it's subject the same, It's the same thing, and he, there's a solution. He can fuck his wife. He can help her. He wow. Can fuck his Do you wife. hear this, Fernando? Are you excited? You just got to get her really, really wasted and just go plow it. Oh, my God. All right. Did you ever go see a doctor? <laughs> Dr. To <have> Red Pan. <laughs> did you ever go see a doctor to help you out with this like he did? Yeah. Uh, I went to a physical therapist. It's an actual. And, and generally, it's for women that give birth because the walls tear. Or, and it, also dudes, uh, you know, with uh, have sexual dysfunction as well. So, like, a lot of guys have prostate problems, you know, will go uh, to a, a same exact kind of physical therapist as well. Wow. Yeah. Like what kind of prostate problems? I think I might have that. <laughs> what are we talking? Why? What are you? What are your symptoms, Joaquin Watkins? Just like prostate stuff. <laughs> like what? Like it? Like it takes me really long to pee. How long? Like longer than a normal human. Like I'm back there a while. You're like, where's Job? I mean, where's Joaquin? He's back there. <laughs> He's been like a long time. Where is this guy? Wow. But like I don't have health insurance. Like what is the issue? Dude, you could get free health insurance right now. Are, are, you know that. Are so. you going to uh you going to read us our futures or something Absolutely. cool like that? I, I uh, what about my there. prostate problems? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm I gonna, guess. That's what we're going to ask about. We're going to ask uh you know okay, Christy okay. is a special astrologist. She's worked on us before on this show. She's always been spot on. She brought some cards this time, uh, and we're going to figure out if we can solve uh, Joaquin's uh, prostate problem. Yeah, you know what's really funny is I was in Tucson and I was high with my friend Nikki. We were doing shows. That is funny. And uh, these cards. Oh wow! Look at that. That's uh, that's actually the vagina yes. of uh, someone with a pelvic <laughs> flora problem. So and I, I brought I brought y'all. So so these are gifts to to y'all. So let me know what questions you have for me for the tarot. Okay, well, uh, okay. Um, what would be a good uh, question to start? You know, uh, uh, Red Band okay. uh, announced uh, this week yeah. that um, he has bought a house in Austin, Texas, which is about to be the new hub of comedy in the United States of America. And um, a lot of people are moving there, including perhaps even myself, including perhaps even the entire show of Kill Tony. Uh, so my question is this for your tarot cards. Uh, is is that a good maneuver for us? Is that a good question? It's a beautiful question. Okay, perfect. And how about card number seven from the top? Card number seven. Okay, red band. So stop messing with me. Here's things. what I'll do because he's a seven degree. Uh, uh, Jesus, so oh, here we go. With your seven stupid. Degree? It's, it's, you so already got one in this episode. Shut up with your seven shit. Go. Okay, is the Austin thing a good move for us? I have to us? pick a card. So okay. what I'm gonna do? How often do you do this, red band? So How do you I'm know what she's doing? I'm gonna pass these baby wipes to y'all. Oh my goodness. There we go. This is it. And what I'm going to do is nothing I'm better than a shea butter, shea butter baby wipe. And I'm going to shuffle the cards and then um, I'm going to give you all instructions. So everybody, while I'm shuffling the cards, have a word or an intention that you're putting in, like a and and preferably positive, kind. So the word I'm putting in is compassion. That's the word I'm going to put in as I shuffle these cards. And uh, or your intention. I just keep thinking of the N word. Is that a bad word to? I mean, you know, if 
if that's a positive word for you, absolutely. You know, there's Perfect. positive and negative are the same thing at the end of the day, right? Okay. I got a question. If I think COVID, is that positive? Well, I mean, it's it's depending how you look at it. If you're positive with COVID, you know. One word, COVID, Joel. Okay, COVID. let's keep let's keep okay. let's keep the ball rolling. My name is Joaquin. So, okay, let me know. Think of your words. Let me know when to stop shuffling and. N word. I'm gonna pa- I'm gonna pass the deck starting with Brian, okay. um, and each of y'all have your own card. So this is your card for the rest of 2020. This is your. Do we your get to keep to it keep, afterwards? Your card to keep. Yeah. Wow. So. Brian, since your question, tell me when Jeremiah is going to be so mad he missed out on a free thing. Stop. I got a question. Is this okay. scary? Like, should I really think this through or? Jesus, that is so Mexican of you, Joel, to be afraid of the tarot cards. The like, name's Joaquin. Hey, is, is Jesus going to be mad at me for these? I just don't know if I want to think what I'm thinking. And then uh, Whoa. all those cards are your message for the rest of the year. So basically... Drugs told me to do this when I came here the next time. They were just like, this is, instead of doing a regular tarot reading, to, to give you guys these cards. So, uh, t- these are goddesses. Can I switch my goddess with his? His is hotter. Yeah, no, mine's super hot. It says I'm going to die before the year's out. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your goddess and what's your message? Uh, my goddess is Machig Labron. <laughs> the diamond-hearted Dakini. And what's the little oracle message at the bottom? I see the light in my own darkness. I face my ego beliefs to feel free. And you're a Leo. What, what's the Leo supposed to, to face in their life? Uh, the refrigerator. A Leo's. <laughs> <laughs> Leadership. Leadership, loyalty. Loyalty. Strength. Mm -hmm. And they're ruled by the sun, which is the positive and negative of their ego. So your your answer is you have to face this like a lion. Oh. So yes, yes. (laughs) Lion on an e bike. Look out. (laughs) It's great. (laughs) Okay. So I got a card. Can we talk about it? Absolutely. Mine is Sarah La. Kali, queen of the outsiders, says, I have arrived. I am where I will always be in love. What does that mean? So this is the fierceness. So the thing about you, Tony, is you're not just a regular Gemini. We've talked about this before. I completely agree with you. I would consider you... If you weren't a comedian, I would consider you a defense attorney. Like, if you went another way in a career, you would be a fucking badass defense attorney. But with that comes, again, great responsibility because you're looking at it from the inverse. So if we look at the two of you as a pair, you are the infinite sign together, the dark and the light. But, you know, with that, you're meshing. So for Kali's energy... Mm -hmm. That is somebody who kills. Kali, her energy kills. And if we think of California Mm. with all the fires going on, she is the goddess of fire. Mm. So she's purging. So your job right now as Kill Tony is to kill yourself, bruh. Oh, perfect. I'm going to kill myself. That's it. I've always said that if anyone tells me to kill myself, I'm going to do it. Coming up to see you, Brody. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. following Enjoy in the it. footsteps. Enjoy it. Oh, hi, Brody. How are you today? My headshots are 11 by 17. Wow. I stand out in a pile. These tarot cards are crazy. We're able to tap in with recently deceased comedian Brody Stevens. Brody, what else is going on up there? Positive push. Okay. Brody, Brody, how do you feel about the Dodgers winning the World Series? Uh Yes. Hashtag, you got it. Okay, this is this always gets creepy uh, really yeah, fast. Go, go okay, weird. let's go with Don's tarot card. All right, mine is the green tarot. Aww. Interesting. The Buddha of enlightened action. Is that good? Do you want me to read what it says at the bottom? Yes. Uh, my soul informs my every step. I do what my heart compels me to do. That's beautiful, Don. Thank you. So... Tara. Let's work up your puss a little bit, okay? Uh, <laughs> what high school did you go to? Saginaw so, Douglas MacArthur in Saginaw Township, Michigan. 
So um, for you, Tara, the green Tara, is the word compassion. So your job is to learn how to be more compassionate. <laughs> wow, there you go. You know what? <laughs> Fuck your goddamn cards, okay? I'm a compassionate son of a bitch. Okay, Fuck let's go with cock. Jet Ski Jesse Johnson here. I got a freaking egg. <laughs> Whoa, what is that? Is that like a wild card? Is that like a joker? You're pregnant. Uno. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I'm pregnant because... I hold the universe within me. Whoa. I'm a, a force of an ever expanding love. Oh, that's amazing. Fuck okay. yeah. What does that mean? Well, she's the cosmic egg, so she's here. She's the nucleus. She's bringing everybody together. She's the glue of the show right now. I absolutely agree that she is the glue of the show right now. Can I ask I you a question? We're, you know what? This is how we'll rationalize firing Jeremiah is because we had, <laughs> yes. we'll tell him that we had a breakthrough with a horoscope lady. <laughs> Well, this is the first I'm hearing we're moving to Austin. So. Well, I mean, Did congratulations. You, does Jeremiah know when you lost your virginity? Don't tell him because it will really upset the family. All right, I'll show you. And it's up. absolutely true. She does bring the entire show together. A fresh energy, always positive, always hilarious. Absolutely. Picks her moments. Sweet sounding, not 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 like crazy sounding. Great trumpet. musician, yes. uh, not aggressive, doesn't <laughs> yeah. try to take things over, right, Jet Ski? Gemini, but different. You're Gemini? Yeah. When's your birthday? June 4th, I've told you seven times. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, perfect. I'm a really good friend. Let's go to uh, Chroma Chris here. Speaking of June, uh, June 7th birthday here. I'm also wow. a Gemini. Look at that. <laughs> I'm June 8th. Did you know that? Whoa, yeah. Know that. Have, uh, have, uh, Heinzcliff or something's on the calendar, have, I believe. Have we ever talked about this? I don't think so. Like seven times? <laughs> seven. <laughs> okay, so tell, tell us about your card, Chroma Oh, Chris. I got a uh, Saras, Saras Wadi. The goddess of self-knowledge, and it says, um, "The essence of who I am flows effortlessly into everything I create." Mm. So, Sarah Swati is, is interesting because if we think of pelvic floor dysfunction and the sort of theme tonight, that is the second chakra. The second chakra is Sarah Swati. She rules the creative chakra. It's interesting enough because. It's also the cosmic egg sort of meshing. So you basically got the goddess of creativity. And so wow. Nice. Look at that. And Andy just put out a new uh, new video that's out on his YouTube. So that makes sense. He's been okay. touched by the goddess of creativity. I even got two. I got a new video even now. So. <laughs> wow. Look at that. You've been touched <laughs> by an angel. By Ladies and gentlemen, there's, there's, only, there's only one person left. Who we need to get uh, red, and he goes by the name of Joaquin Watkins. Let's see what happens here. I'm kind of scared right now, but uh, go ahead, Joaquin. What do I tell you first? Who I got? Just read the fucking card, Joaquin. Just like we all did, okay. right down the barrel. Teresa of Avila, Our Lady of the Interior Life. I trust the answers I find within me. I know that the presence of love is real. So you, I think you should try putting a vibrator up your asshole to help with wow, your Wow, Jesus. Oh. Try. Sometimes I'm a professional. What are you talking about? Sometimes Christy gets very direct with her uh, tarot reading. I think sometimes she just wants to get shit done. Was this the punchline to this long-ass joke with these cards? Because if it is, this sucks. I'm going to say vibrator. All right. No, tell me my truth. What am I What have to be scared of? He ne he wants to know because he really is a Mexican. Do you know how what uh, what that means to him? Well, I think for you, it's just opening your heart. This is a heart opening thing. It's actually being vulnerable because you're Capricorn. And at the end of the day, it's not about control. It's about allowing people to love you. So yeah, put the vibrator in your heart, Joel. <laughs> okay, all right. So I buy a vibe, put a strap on in my heart. I get it. <laughs> Christy, this has been so awesome. Thank you so much. You, Another Christy. great horoscope reading by Christy Belich. Wow, I love this. Yeah, so cool. And I felt I felt that she was a very cute girl, and one day I hope your pussy works. Give and, her a nice And day. the minute was great, too, Christy. Topical Absolutely. in the zeitgeist of everything that's happening right now with the global pandemic. And uh, speaking of global people, this guy is shaped like a globe. Um, this guy, unbelievable regular here on this show, uh, truly one of my favorite comedians in the world, an incredibly uh, efficient and well-respected door guy here at the Comedy Store, another guy featured in the Comedy Store documentary. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you 
the great, the powerful, David Lucas. Uh, there's a new study that says that shrooms can reset a depressed brain. And it's like, who the fuck wants to reset depression? I'm at my adult depression now. I just accepted that I was fat. You think I want to go back to my childhood shit? Uh, I think time travel is only a happy scenario for white people. <laughs> what the fuck am I going to go back in time and do? Get hung? Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm black. I go back in time and find out that dinosaurs like to eat niggas. Oh, my bad. I <laughs> I go back in time and find out that dinosaurs like to eat black people. My bad. <laughs> uh, my friends are getting soft. Uh, my buddy texted me the other day about his love language. He's like, dude, uh, my love language is words of affirmation. I'm like, why are you telling me that shit? You want me to suck your dick? <laughs> all right, yeah. Sure. Heck yeah. Got it all in That's in a great. minute. Squoze it in, just like he squoze into that sweatshirt before tonight's show. Hey, David Lucas, I look good. that thing is tight as shit. That thing is tighter than Fernando Perez's wife's pussy. <laughs> Don't be jealous, Tony. You, you put that sweatshirt on and then ate dinner. Tony, shut up. That was a great set, man. I really liked the Thanks, uh, time bro. travel joke. Thanks, that was man. fun. Yeah, I'm trying to work it out. Time travel jokes, the joke of the night. I mean, Thank it's you. just incredible. That's a real, real yeah. timeless. I mean, that's just, that's an incredible joke. Yeah. Definitely yeah. a lot more to be explored. You wrote that this week? Uh, I wrote it like probably sitting at that table over there. I, like it, yeah. I don't know if like ideas float in your head. Because like a lot of ideas, I believe, float in comedians' head. And we're like, that shit would never work. Mm -hmm. So we don't actually like do it. Mm -hmm. Because like, you know, when you're a regular on here, you want to, have something that's like a seven out of a ten so people are like what the fuck he fell off so right. it's like i got hella ideas that i would like to talk about but because of the current situation i'm not able to like fully squoze it in somewhere to work it out right <laughs> so you don't know it till you say it on there right mm -hmm. no yeah and that's something that uh was definitely featured on i believe last night's showing of that comedy store documentary it was like you know it, and, and it made me think about this crazy time because a huge part of my writing process specifically for stand-up comedy is trying it out. Yeah, like yeah. writing things down and thinking that yeah. it's going to work really isn't any part of my system at all. Exactly. Like maybe like the first two months that I did this and I was just wrong. It, right. it just it wasn't working. Um but I think, you know, things like that, and you have such a cool opportunity here on this show to at least get feedback from at least the people in this room. If Absolutely. you get a laugh in this room off Absolutely. a joke, that means it would obviously kill in front Absolutely. of a actual packed audience. All the so. jokes I've been doing in the window murdered this past weekend on the show I was on. Yep. Great. Yeah. Yep. What, so awesome. what's going on with uh, William calling you out about the show? Yeah. I don't know. What happened on Halloween? Hold up. Let me, I'll let you see. Here. Since William say I didn't do good, read what the guy said. That's what the guy said who ran the show. Oh, read it out loud, shit. Red Man. Oh Thanks so much for closing out the show. The whole audience had the feeling of like, this guy is the next fucking real one, and I just wanted to let you know I'm appreciative and of you being on my little show, and I'd love to have you back in the future. Also, who was William with, that blonde chick that he was making out with? <laughs> oh. Hey, w William is sitting in the back of the room. William, are you still back there? Yeah, did you get a message sent to you from the guy that booked you guys? Because David did. Oh, well, he's he not. He's black. white as hell. A white? He's William white said as, he was black. He looks like Napoleon. He's white with long brown hair. <laughs> oh my goodness! Uh, so you, you think you did better than William on the show? I mean, like uh, me and it's two different styles of comedy. Oh, I agree. It's it, like William does. 45 one-liners in 30 minutes yep. and, and I like to uh, I'm an observation comic so I just say shit that you already know in a different perspective and you're like damn I never thought about it like that so yep. it's two different types of humor two different like comparing myself to someone like William isn't fair did you dress up for Halloween absolutely not uh, when's the last time you dressed up for Halloween probably as a kid tonight wow. as the Kool-Aid man <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah! <laughs> this would be some, this some 
There's some black people Kool-Aid. Like this is like black cherry. Like they mm-hmm. don't sell. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that was a good. That was a good Kool-Aid. Absolutely. Do you remember what the last thing you were uh, that you dressed up as though? Uh, a gallon of milk. A gallon of milk. Yeah. White, what made you do that? White, Chocolate milk. Me too. No, white t-shirt and a red hat. White t-shirt and a red that's hat. Right. I remember you saying yeah. that. Yeah. Wow. That's it. Yeah, I mean, I, I and developed... And people were like, what are you? And you're like, I'm a gallon of milk. Yeah, bro, I developed humor at an early age, so I was always trying to be goofy as hell. You also developed breasts at a young age. <laughs> 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 oh, God. Wow. <laughs> hell yeah. So uh, did you do anything fun uh, other than the show on Saturday this past week? Uh, that was pretty much out. That was pretty much it. Um, yeah, that was it, man, you know. Shit, get drunk a little. Not get drunk, but drink a little bit and chill. Okay. Yeah. Nothing That's crazy. Fun. I've been chilling nowadays, bro, especially with the climate. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Absolutely. It's cool. It's cool. I did, oh, I did. Uh, I trained uh, Saturday and Sunday. Oh, yeah. I saw Jeff was with you. Jeffrey Burner. Yeah, that motherfucker can fight, bro. He yeah. can fight that he, low. He's one of those hidden rip guys. Like, yeah. like when he Christ. takes off his shirt, you're like, what bro. the fuck? He, he weighs like 130, and he's strong as hell. Yeah. Strong. I, when we locked up, I'm like, damn, you strong. Like, yeah. it was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, but he came. Yeah. Those are the types of people you need to be afraid of. 130 yeah. oh, pound, yeah. oh, absolutely yeah. ripped, super strong guys that seem unassuming. And, and the then, thing I hate about small guys when I'm rolling with them is that they can get their arms under your neck and into those weird places so much easier than a big guy. Right. You know, a big guy's not going to choke me out, really, but a small guy like Joel can get that little forearm. Oh, yeah. And it's <laughs> sharp and it hurts. <laughs> it cuts off the windpipe. Hell, yeah. All right, David. Well, fun stuff. Keep yeah. training. Stay yeah. healthy. Stay powerful. There he goes, the great David yeah. Lucas, everybody. Yeah. On to the next one we go. Thank you. God, that time travel joke is something else. That was great. That's liquid gold right there. And that's there. a fun one to play with. You're, you're right. There's so much you can go into. That's a, that, that is a diamond. Like, you could even break down, like, what, the 1920s? This happened, 1930s? Yeah. You know. I love the dinosaur thing. And really, it's like, I don't even think you need to mention the slavery thing. I think it's, a, like, assumed and go straight to the dinosaur. And then what else? Everything else pretty much sucked, too. Right? Like it's like you could sort of go halfway back, and it's like just if, if you wanted your own, like, water fountain or something, you could look at the positives, right? Jesus is one black friend. I mean, wouldn't it sort of be better if water fountains were... Ah, forget it. What the... When, f- when Jesus turned water into wine, he had a separate badge for the... For okay, thank you, Joaquin. <laughs> uh, I pulled another name out of the bucket. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I believe this is his first time on Kill Tony. Make some noise for David Eubanks, everyone. <laughs> hey... Look what they've done to my song. Here is David Eubanks. I uh, I, I kind of grew up in a different family. I have gay dads. I have two dads. And when you grow up in that kind of household, you uh, get a lot of questions, especially from kids in high school, middle school. Oh, Dave, is it weird if you hear your parents having sex? Is that weird or awkward? Of course it is. For the same reason it's weird for anybody to hear their parents fucking. Like, no kid is out there cheering on mom and dad like, yeah, dad, give it to her. Come on, Mom, you can take more. Wait a minute. Dad's not supposed to be home for another hour and a half. And the FedEx man sure has been here a while. And I've heard my, I have heard my dad's fucking, yes. But they never say anything out of the ordinary. It's all the normal stuff people say when they're making love. Harder, deeper, Carl, glad you could make it. Come on in here, pick a hole, start pumping, Merry Christmas. You know, perfectly normal things. And my dad's been fucking for a while. 25 years they've been going strong, which means they're good at it. I bet they could suck the cork out of a wine bottle. All right, thank you. Fuck yeah. David. To my song. Can I ask a question before you talk to him? Yeah. All right, I will give two points to anybody that can name what famous commercial used that song in their ad. There is a very famous company. That used that. Look what they done. I'm gonna to go my with son. Dove soap. Nope. Give us a hint, Don. All right, Coca Cola. 
Oh, okay. Oh, that's a good hint. That was the answer, too. Let's go with Coca-Cola on this one. RC Cola. David Eubanks, welcome to the show. This is your first Thank time you. here, correct? Yes. And this is true. You have two gay dads. Yes. And you hang out with them a lot? Uh, I haven't seen them in recent months. They've been kind of just hanging out by themselves. I, um, they live down in Redondo. I live up in Thousand Oaks. Oh, okay. And yeah. uh, what's your uh, mom like? She's super cool, super chill. You guys um, are close? Yeah, my mom's super cool. She's like a like totally like sporty like outdoor type woman. So she like took how me old uh, how old were you when your dad uh, came out of the closet? Uh, see, here's the weird thing. I don't know. It's always been rumored that everyone in my family knew that my dad was gay, and that they just tried. My mom and my dad tried to make something work that they just couldn't necessarily like make happen mm -hmm. during a time when it was really not okay to be gay. You know, during like the '80s and 90s, like '70s and stuff like that. So. I officially knew about it when I was like five years old after they split. Okay. Yeah. All right. And what, what, uh, what was that like for you? Were, was it, were you always cool it was with a, it? Mm, it was a brutal divorce. So right. like it was a really tough thing to kind of like go through as like a kid. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I mean, it is what it is. It's just it's divorce, you know. It happens to a lot of people. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you ever do anything cool with your, uh, with your two dads? Yeah, um, they took me to Vegas for my 21st birthday, and that was a ton of fun. We went out and partied all night long. It was really oh, cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. My goodness. Did your mother ever remarry? She's actually engaged again for the first time. In Straight like guy? 15. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What if she's just, she's just a chaser, oh, you know? Like. <laughs> wow. And what do you do for work, David? Uh, currently, I work at REI in um, Oxnard. Oh, sweet. Yeah. REI is what? At like uh, you know, where you buy like, like the canoes outdoor store, and like outdoor the stuff. Oh, okay. Kayaks, you know, stuff like that. Oh, okay. Wow, Joaquin, what happened to your accent there? Yeah. Oh, kayaks. You buy a boat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, how how you, how long you been doing that for? Uh, just a couple months. I actually moved down here in June. I used to live up in Humboldt, um, and I moved down here in June. Whoops, you know. Yeah. Wow. How do you like Humboldt? I loved it up there. It was great. Yeah. Um, I that's what? That's up. what? Three, four hours north of San <laughs> no. Francisco? Oh, I thought you were going to say three or four hours north of here. No, no. It's uh, a right. yeah, 10 it's hours about, north of here. About four hours, five hours north of San Francisco, depending on traffic, you can get out of there, like in Santa Rosa and stuff My like God, that. God, that is far. Is yeah, that cl that's closer to Oregon than it even is San Francisco, isn't yeah, it? Yes, and it's still an hour from the Oregon border. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. It's only an hour gnarly. from the border of Oregon, yeah. which is only three hours from the southern border of Washington which is only two hours from the southern border of Canada. Correct. So technically, it's closer to Canada than it is Los Angeles. It's bananas. Like, the drive from that here to bananas. there is 12 yeah. hours like on, at a, on a good day. You drove today? No, no. Oh. Uh, no. Okay. No, you live real. in Thousand Oaks now. Yeah. Why did you set up camp in Thousand Oaks? It was just where, like, the living situation was It's nice available. in Thousand Oaks. And yeah. his fathers are gay. That's the other Right, <laughs> right. So let, let me ask you this. You did a joke about hearing your gay dads have sex but have you heard them have sex yeah me and my stepbrother used to like try to turn the tv up really loudly so we couldn't <laughs> yeah i bet no. you know what sucks is when you're your two gay dads are having sex and you turn the tv up really loudly but it's accidentally gay porn on the tv <laughs> and, and it just sounds like four dudes having sex instead of two to use a Brody line, did you ever smell them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was it yeah. humid in your apartment? All I bet the time? their bedroom smells like William Montgomery shorts. Oh, no. <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> Shit. Hey. Uh, um, so that's fun. Is your dad, uh, the dad that made you, is he the top or the bottom, you think? Bottom. Wow. Yeah. Look at that. My goodness. What's yeah. it like to know that your father gets fucked in the ass? Okay, no, it's okay. You don't have to. Have you that. ever tried it? <laughs> have you ever tried it? Good question. No, my girlfriend stuck a finger up my asshole a while back, but I didn't. You're I wasn't like, a Daddy. fan. No. <laughs> Wait, what happened? You, it, he, she stuck your finger in your ass, and what? Yeah, we were like trying to do like new, like sexy things, and she wanted to put a finger in my asshole because she was trying to convince me it felt good, and I right. heard that it did, so mm -hmm. I let her let her rip. But, that is an uh, who told you that? that who a, told you it felt that good? Friend, <laughs> gay dad. <laughs> the gay dad's. Dad is like taste the rainbow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Listen, son, if there's one thing I gotta tell you. He sat him down when a man loves another man. <laughs> Let me tell you about the birds and the uh, birds. It's probably <laughs> more than a finger. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Okay. Let me ask you this, and this is a serious question. Huh. As a child, did your friends know that your dad was 
a homosexual mm-hmm. and did they give you a hard time about it some of them were really cool some of them were really not like not my friends like but kids in high school and like middle school and elementary school they just when they figured that out there was like a lot of teasing and stuff like that and also um, Don, we don't call it a hard time in a gay household <laughs> yeah you ca- you came from a broken home oh yeah, well, okay. kind of. David, uh, now, I must say this guy was in, not as interesting as the girl, the guy that had the girlfriend that can't fuck, but you know, still very interesting. That's actually funny you mentioned that. That's exactly where I was going with this. When you guys, uh, when you and your girlfriend decided to start being experimental, you mentioned that she stuck a finger in your uh, what uh, David Lucas would call a booty hole. Mm. Um, now, what else did you guys do that was experimental? I think the listeners of this show would love to know. That was pretty much it. We've just uh, we've tried like different drugs while trying to fuck. What um, kind of drugs? Mushrooms. Oh, um, that's a fun one to yeah, do while having sex. That's yeah. one of the worst yeah. ones. No, it's awful. It's a <laughs> horrendous idea. Fuck. Oh, yeah. You're a monster. We tried like fucking in different places, like outdoors, like camping. Like we did a hike in Sedona, and we tried to like Ooh. fuck out there. Hell yeah! And it's not. It's not good. No, there's no. flies and shit. Right. Like right. Yeah. There's nothing sexy about uh, it. What ethnicity is your girlfriend? Uh, Jewish and Puerto Rican. Oh, wow. wow, look at that. Jewish and Puerto Rican. My yes. goodness. Wow, what an... Did your in- father ever turn you on to poppers? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, my dad's my dad's pretty like mainstream, like Anderson Cooper gay. He's not That's what like, he calls his two dads as poppers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at who topped my joke. Oh, the oh, little my God. Watkins. <laughs> Wow, what a star. <laughs> wow. So tell us one more fun fact about you that we would be surprised to know. You have any special skills or talents? You I sw- majored in wildlife biology up in Humboldt State University. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wildlife biology. You're just so trying to at? figure out why two guys were doing it. You were like, Is <laughs> this, right. does this happen in nature? <laughs> yes, it down. does. <laughs> yeah. What did, what's the most interesting thing that you learned at your time up in Humboldt studying wildlife biology? That I love stand-up. Oh, okay. Mm. That's an emotional... Yeah. emotional. Who's your comic hero? Say Don Paris. It'd be good to say Kill Tony is what I would have gone with. To be fair, I did really love your part in the Comedy Store documentary about the late nights. Like, I really respect that. That was awesome shit. Wow, yeah. Yeah. look at that. Yeah. I like you a lot better, and I'll never tease you about your dad. Look at that. You know what? I think, I think maybe you just, had, I think you just found a third dad. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I'm collecting. There you go. Well, uh, thank you so much, David, for coming on. Thank very, you. very fun stuff. David Eubanks, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Look what they've done to my song. Hey, hey. Les autres juifs, voilà toi. She switches to French at some point in there. Je do ce fil, I'm a good at night. Melanie. Also, the Hillside Singers. Ah. Melanie also famously sang, uh, I've got a brand new, new pair, pair of roller, roller skates. skates. You, you got, got a brand, brand new key. Me. Oh, yeah. It's brand new key, not friend in me. I said brand new now, key. No, I know. I said friend in me. I got oh. it confused with the great Randy Newman. <laughs> you love you those car movies. When the rogies. <laughs> All right. This young man has been on this show numerous times before. He famously has had sex with William Montgomery's girlfriend. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here is Mario Tonti. Yeah. Is there any way he can just talk about that sexual encounter the entire time? <sighs> Thank you. Um, I'm Italian, so I grew up with a really racist grandfather. Uh, but I was a kid, so I was too young to know that he was racist. So up until I was 10 years old, I thought the family living down the street were actual raccoons. <laughs> like, like when you're five and you hear your pappy say the coloreds, you just think he's talking about crayons. Like you don't find out the truth until like way later. Like I didn't even know they were called Brazil nuts until a year after he died. <laughs> and like it was his favorite nut too, dude. Like you couldn't just like walnuts. What the fuck? Like, yeah, he, uh, he, um, he died of lung cancer though when I was 12. He, uh, he smoked a carton of Camel non-filter cigarettes every day for like 30 years. Jesus. Yeah. He loved smoking, but he would have hated that he died with black lungs. <laughs> I, uh, I told that joke to my mom because it's about her dad. 
And she was like, he wasn't racist. They all talked like that back then. Like, it's like, yeah, mom, so they were all racist back then. <laughs> thank, thank there you. it is. Perfect timing, Mario Tonti. Mario Tonti does it again. How's it going, Mario? It's good. I'm it's going great. It's good, Don. I don't want to talk about it more than he doesn't want to talk about her. It's you okay. Know? We won't talk kidding. about it. Good. Update us about uh, your life or anything that you want to talk about with us. You've been um, on the show numerous times. You know how this part works. Yeah, I, I started taking yoga a couple of months ago. Started taking yeah. yoga? Yeah, I started taking a yoga class. Okay. Yeah, I got so fucking bored. That How's that going for you? It's it's all right. It makes I, you feel good, doesn't it? It does make me feel good. I enjoy Where it. Where do you take it? In the ass? Pan Pacific. Yeah, right in my... <laughs> right in my this in has my nothing to do with him fucking Williams yeah. Booty hole. Um, you do it at Pan Pacific Park? Yeah. That's my park. I know. I see uh, is, is that, is that I see Rick back there. I see him walking every yeah. morning sometimes. Yeah, that's, that's our... You uh, see the juggler guy that's always there? No, I saw, I saw uh, Alex Hooper there. He was Alex fil- Hooper walking the tightrope. He was filming a skit the other day. It was like with three dudes like humping air like for like an okay. hour. Okay. Were they dads? Yeah, that park <laughs> also has uh, stand-up comedy shows that they do. It does, every Friday and Saturday. Yep. You do ever do those? Uh, I go to them. I'm, go- I'm on one Saturday there. Okay. Yeah. Who books so, that? Uh, it's all random. Oh, Ben Hurwitz is his name. Yeah. All right. Ben Hurwitz. Okay. I'll be there next week too. Then. All right, man. Good. To see you, see you soon. What have you uh, What have What have you learned at, uh, at yoga when it comes to uh, the people that do yoga? What have you learned? People watching there. Oh, man, white people are terrible. Just people in the park in the morning are just like not my kind of people. Yeah. But you say so. white people are terrible. Yeah, most of them. Have you ever <laughs> Have you ever hung around people? Of other races before? Yeah, I mean, most people are terrible, but like... Okay. But white people are tripping. Yeah. White people yeah, doing yoga are. in a park in yeah. the morning. But I'm one of them now, so it's like... Yeah. Are I you? What are, what ethnicity are you, Mario Tonti? I'm Italian. Really? Yeah, I just, I just said it. God. Just, <laughs> just Italian, huh? Yeah. You Mostly. don't seem my, very my dad, Italian to me. I'm not like a... I just finished watching The Sopranos. I'm not like... That Italian, but <laughs> you just well, I mean, I've seen it before, but I just fin- I just oh, watched, okay. rewatched it. Yeah, no, I did that too. But uh, yeah, I'm like, I'm not Italian. I'm like watching it. I'm like, I'm not fucking Italian enough. Like they're just like you really too not. Italian. I'm not. Yeah, you, you don't, don't seem. You Italian don't have. Enough. You don't have the swagger of an I Italian. Know. It's not about like talking Italian. It's like you just don't have like the Italians are normally ridiculously cool. You look more like a Luigi. I know. I'm taller. I'm not fat. Mamma mia! There he is. Did you you just know, say I that? watched The Sopranos recently, and Italians are like pretty Armenian. Yeah, a lot of people are saying that you're reminding them of Luigi. Uh, do you get this a lot? No, but I, get, I did get made fun of for my name a lot. Oh, you did. Up. That's so sad. Here it comes. How sad. Here it comes. <laughs> Luigi. I set you up for that. So you have good. a princess right now, Luigi. I don't have a princess. I'm working on it, but uh-huh. no prince. Oh, here it comes again. <laughs> you don't have to cue up the sound effects, Mario. We're just going to do them. Uh, All right, here comes another sound effect coming right at you. <laughs> How many years sober do you have now? Because I know you used to love heroin and stuff. I mean, I haven't done heroin in like a long time. Really? How long? You did? It's been like 15, I don't know, 24, I stopped. Kind of a fucking Damn. Italian does heroin, dude. I know. A he hadn't even one. thought about heroin until you brought that up. I know, dude. <laughs> Well, this year is kind of making me think Um, Tony it. Soprano's nephew did heroin on the show. He did. Yeah, but that's a fiction. I remember when the, when that show was out, it was like, I, got, I was like stop, stopping right around the time when that was like airing at the same time. So like I was like with my family, like watching the episode. Like, and look, for, I mean, look what ended like up sh- happening to him. Sucks. Christopher like Moltisanti, shit. played by the great Michael Imperioli, who was Spider in the hit movie Goodfellas. You keep it going. Who had a very big line in there. Who had a very big line in Spider, Goodfellas? Yeah. Okay, forget it. Was that a trivia? It ask, was. Ask me. I didn't understand no, the no, question. No, Who had no. a very big line? He did. Yeah. Spider, what was his big line in there? Um, why don't you take that? Or no, that, that was Joe Pesci. You know what? Uh, you know what? Why don't you, you know what, Tommy? Why don't you go fuck yourself? Oh, you're going to let go. this fucking guy out? Oh, you fucking... You're going to let him talk good, to Tommy. you like that? I really thought I took the... 
show into a nosedive, and you now, saved it. Thank you. Now, I know Goodfellas, absolute front to back, every single word. That's what I used to watch on every sick day when I was a kid. That's how frightening my childhood was, is that when I was 9, 10, 11, 12, on sick days, that's what I would watch every how single day. sick Just days show- did you have? Huh? Thank you, Joaquin. Just showed it to my girlfriend for the first time. Oh, God. Her mind must have just been blown out. I was outside. so jealous of her. I know. There's nothing more fun than getting to see movies like that for the first time. Absolutely insane. Um, you know what? I just showed somebody for the first time a couple weeks ago, and it was an absolute blast, and it always is that way, it was the great movie, Windy City Heat. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Fuck yeah. Who likes to fuck? <laughs> yeah. It's my tagline. That's right. I do that. Mario, we're going to keep it moving here. Thank you so much. Another you, great minute. Very set. fun as always. Come back again soon. Mario Tonti, everybody. We got one name left in the bucket. We're going to get another quick one up here. We're going to knock it out very quickly. And then we have a very, very special surprise. Ladies and gentlemen, your final bucket comedian of the night for her very first time ever in Kill Tony history. Put your hands together for the comedy stylings of Lisa Landers. Here we go. What's going on? This is Lisa Landers. Thank you. Hey, I'm Lisa Landers. I have this really familiar look. Kind of like a Mormon housewife. But I get mistaken for people all the time. I've even gotten celebrities. I've gotten Lorna Dern, Amy Poehler, Macaulay Culkin. Because as we all know, Macaulay's known for his boobs. <laughs> so, I, you know, as I drive around, I see um, a lot of people wearing masks in their cars. I just have to say, Wearing a mask when you're alone in your car is kind of like wearing a condom to masturbate. You can do it! You don't really need to. I, got to, I still got a couple more minutes. <laughs> there you go. No, that's okay. good. 53 seconds of oh, Silent Thunder by Lisa Landers. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Lisa. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Of course. We're happy to have you. How long have you been on stand-up comedy? About three years. About three years. Where are you from? I'm from Ohio. What part of Ohio? Cambridge. Cambridge, <laughs> Ohio. Is that near Athens? Where is that? It's, a, it, it's, it's right where 70 and 77 come together. 70 and 77. Interstate so, 70 running east and west mm-hmm. through Columbus. So it's like east it's, of yeah, Columbus? East of Columbus, yeah. close to West Virginia. Have you ever heard okay. of a place Athens. called Michigan? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, fuck you then. Yeah, uh, I just heard of. Uh, I just heard <laughs> something about them this week. I heard to Mich- a lot of Michigan. Oh, we're, that's right. Okay, we're Michigan dealing State. with we're dealing with uh, somebody over there. Wait, what is that, Tony? What is Michigan it? State beat Michigan in a regular season game, eliminating them from playoff contention. <laughs> hey, you son of a bitch. <laughs> How's their water up there? Oh, you yeah. You got that guys. dirty Michigan hey, water. Yeah. It's in one town. That's yeah. in one town. You got to broaden your range of knowledge of Michigan <laughs> in one town. It's pretty close F- to everything Flint. else. Yeah. Has anyone ever told you you look like Nancy Cartwright? Nancy Cartwright. Oh, that's a, a compliment. She looks like that's the lady who voiced Bart Simpson. Oh, <laughs> wow. We love the Simpsons. Did I ever tell you my Nancy Cartwright story real quick? Uh, I was at a bar and she was really wasted and she was just trying to kiss me and I didn't know who she was. And I was like, God, this this woman. And she's like, no, she's too old for me or whatever. And then... uh, we get in the car, and then my friend goes, "You know, did you know that was Nancy Cartwright?" And I, I was thinking, like, how awesome would that be to have fucked like Bart Simpson? You know, like, and, and wait till <laughs> she hears the voices that you can do, Brian. <laughs> 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 ow, ow, homie. Whoa! <laughs> Add it to the list. Voices <laughs> from Red Band. <laughs> Impressions from Red Band. Who else do you got, Ryan? Oh, remind us. Part. Remind us of some of the, the six impressions. That Cartman, you can you do Cartman? <laughs> oh wow, very impressive. Cartman. Who else? Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what kind Reagan. of stuff is it, Brian? Nancy, hey, you can do an, a, a famous impression oh, of a president as favorites. well. Am I correct? I can do Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. Oh yeah. Why, Dean? What do you want, Jerry? 
Impressions, my favorite. Hey, Impressions. We, we, we do your my favorite, your Bob Hope. Yeah. Oh, that's so stupid. Come on, do the Bob All Hope. All right, I'll do we a love quick. It. To, Bob, yeah. Bob Hope talking to his heroin dealer. Hey, I got to tell you, boy, I'm jonesing like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, tell us something wild about you that we'd be surprised to know. Mm. You seem like uh, you've had a, uh, an interesting life. Uh, sort of. Uh, well, I'm a nurse. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking, though, I might need to meet a physical therapist. Yeah. Oh. Uh, after today's... Uh... <laughs> you have a little bit of a, uh, an issue down there? Uh, I love no. this. This is like a gynecology <laughs> episode of Kill Tony. Yeah. Women just coming here like, you have anybody I can see? I have a... Cunt failure night at Kill Tony. <laughs> we, need to get, we, need, we, we need one of those chairs where they just strap their shoes into a... Uh... Oh, God. Oh, yeah. All right. I used oh. to have one of those. Oh, red band. Come on. <laughs> uh, so what else would we be surprised to know about you? You ever been in love? I have. I mm-hmm. have. I've been in an off and on relationship for the past like uh, three With three Melissa years. Etheridge, am I correct? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Ever been with a comic before? No. Ever been with William? With what? William, William Montgomery? No. You saw him earlier. He was the Arab sheik. Uh. Who shit his pants? <laughs> <laughs> what a treat. Uh. <laughs> it's not fair. She might have loved him. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So. Uh, did you vote? I did. Who'd you vote for? Biden. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> can't all be winners. <laughs> uh. Um, okay. What was my next question going to be before this? Now, you, now you don't even thing. care about her anymore. Tony's next question was, <laughs> why did you vote for her? <laughs> did, you, did you start comedy in Ohio? Or did you? No, I started here. Oh, okay. Okay. What do you do for fun? Hmm. What do I do for? Well, stand up. What else other than stand up? You seem like the kind of lady that likes to ride a tandem bicycle by yourself, or uh, <laughs> perhaps um, you know you like to build things out of hollowed books. Hollowed books. <laughs> Got a good laugh from Ryan J. E. Yeah. Belt. I don't know where everybody else is here. <laughs> I, you know, I, I wish that I had something that was terribly interesting about me, but I'm just I'm very plain vanilla. Like, uh, what'd you do today? You woke up, what happens? I got up. Uh, yeah. What do you do? The very first thing, you walk to the... Kitchen. And what do you do in the kitchen? Make coffee. Uh-huh. What do you have, a Keurig? No, just a Regular Mr. coffee, coffee pot? Yes. Like a hotel coffee pot? Yes, just a plain old Mr. Coffee. Oh, my God. How many tattoos oh. do you so, have? <laughs> how many? Do you have any tattoos? No. Okay, so you make the coffee. What do you do while the coffee's brewing? I get out my supplements. Oh, how, what kind of supplements are you taking right now? Uh, B12, iron, zinc. Of you, course, all those things. Vitamin D. Hmm. Are you on Gordon's. Centrum Silver or are you still on regular <laughs> Centrums? <laughs> Depends on what's on sale. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, then what? You take your supplements. I take my supplements. On an empty stomach? Yes. With a glass of water. Yes. Sink water? No. Refrigerator. Filtered. Uh, but refrigerator Filtered. like the glass against the thing. Brita. Brita. N- n- I use a Berkey. Okay. Is that that's one that connects directly to your faucet? No, it's this big. It's like a ch- poor person Brita. I right. piss into a glass and then I <laughs> shove it in my ass. <laughs> okay. Thank you again, Joaquin, for that. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. So you have your filtered water. You take down your supplements. The coffee is almost done brewing. Yes. Then what do you do? I pour myself a cup of coffee. Uh huh. What do you do when you drink the coffee? <laughs> I stand at the kitchen counter. <laughs> you just lean against the kitchen counter. You look out of a window. Do you stare at the floor? You look uh, at your I own look, feet. I, <laughs> I look out the I look out the kitchen window. What do you see out of that window? Uh, Tell us what you see out of the window. Um, just shrubbery, bushes. Do you smoke while drinking the coffee? Uh, no. I wish, but no. So you're looking out, you're looking at strawberry bushes out of the window. And what does that make you think of? Uh, that I, I need to hurry up and get ready for work. Oh my <laughs> goodness. So you get ready for work. What do you listen to on the drive to work? You're about to be a nurse. You're about to go save lives and stretch out vaginal walls. <laughs> Kill Tony. And what do you listen what to? What do I listen to? Uh, I usually listen to the news. Or I, um, or I listen what to... What news? What kind of news? Oh, well, you voted for Biden, so um, I'm guessing um, fake. fake. I, uh, ten <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank ten, you. 1070. 
Kansas City. 1070. Yeah. 1070. Yeah. Fake yes. news. All day, every day. 24-7 fake news. Yes. Okay, Lisa, we're running out of time. Uh, come back again, and let's talk some more. There goes Lisa Landers, Lisa. everybody. Lisa Landers. There goes Lisa Landers. All right. Uh, that was Lisa Landers, and now it is time for uh, something extremely special. Ladies and gentlemen, a few weeks ago, this young man took a hiatus from the show. He went to go visit family in Wyoming. We did not know whether or not he would ever <laughs> return. Uh, the story is absolutely incredible and Anyway, without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure for me to bring up one of my favorite human beings of all time, one of the great comedians in the history of Kill Tony, a legend from Chicago, Illinois, originally from New York, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the great Michael Lair, everybody. Man, I fuck someone when I could walk. I got bored with fucking... All right, I traded fucking for woodworking. You know how mad that makes a lady when she's like, oh, man, can make love to me. And I'm like, nah, bitch, let's make a table. 90% of my life is carabiners. Hooking shit to myself so I don't drop it. Every time I take a shit, it's like a scene from that documentary, Free Solo, trying to find a place to stink my hand between the drywall and the wall scars. I spent more. <laughs> I spent most of my life able-bodied and racist. Now that I'm disabled, I understand what Puerto Ricans are so mad about. Wow! Ladies and gentlemen, the return of the noble beast himself. Look at that look on his face of just pure focus and nobility. Oh, oh, he seems disappointed about something. How you feel, Michael? I'm fine. I'm, uh, I've traveled around the country and I'm uh, m the physical Michael Lara is no longer alive. Oh. I'm Steve Martin Steve Martian? Uh, yeah. Well, what the uh, fuck does that mean? I'm Steve Martian is a vessel that is forming <laughs> the consciousness of Michael Lehrer because the physical of Michael Lehrer can no longer <laughs> deal with the rigors of humanity, small talk, heartbreak, hypocrisy, both important and exporting. Steve Martian is a wider lens for Michael Lair, but it will still be mostly about fucking and drugs. Wow, look at that. Is, is Steve Martian's thing uh, dressing up like Colonel Sanders? <laughs> you fucking little prick. <laughs> what are you, 27 years old? Yeah. Hey, and I will come back for the Colonel Sanders one. Yeah, you want me to do it again so that you could just hit me with it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, is part of Steve Martian's thing that he always dresses like Colonel Sanders? Yeah, ironically enough, KFC and the... Uh, a lemon, a cigar, herbs and spices, and also the cure for ALS. Whoa! KFC ALS. Yeah, Hold on, I'm David Lucas heard KFC and just ran back in the room. 
I think I look a little more like an American psycho than um, Colonel Sanders, no, and I like that. That's actually you, a really good Steve Martin uh, suit. That's probably hard to come by. It is. No, I went to a Hollywood Boulevard, I visited Jan, and I want him to come on the show. Me and Zach Bogus went there looking for this. And this guy, I believe he's from Lebanon, and his suit store in Hollywood Boulevard, you don't know what you're going to get. Extremely helpful. And then, like, I wouldn't bet a million dollars on this. He's a fucking comedy expert. He knew all about you. He's like, oh, Tom Sicker, I moved to Austin. Like, he knew all about I killed Tony the Storm. And then I FaceTimed you mm -hmm. when I was in the shoe shop. And it's like, oh, you must be special. Tony picked up after one ring. That's right. You're goddamn right. When Michael Lair FaceTimes me, I always take it. Because I'm yeah. always, not only am I a good friend, but I also uh, am... Uh, Deathly afraid of missing the last phone call that you make to me. Yeah. <laughs> It'll I mean, be to you because my family is MIA. Oh, really? No, I'm kidding. MIA, like the girl that sings Paper Planes? Yeah. Okay. I don't know why I thought that would be funny. There's nothing funny about <laughs> it. There's nothing funny Honestly, about MIA. Favorite joke of the planes. night, man. <laughs> Fuck. That was good. Thank you, Joaquin. No, oh. no. But, um,. I did go to Wyoming to visit my dad, and beforehand I had sent a wheelchair that was very small so I can use it around the You sent house. a wheelchair ahead of time to Wyoming so that you could use it at your dad's place. Yeah, exactly. And um, they um, did not tell me it would not fit in the bathroom. The wheelchair so, does not wow, fit in the bathroom. How small is that bathroom? Like just through the door or? It was the most narrow ranch style house you've ever been in in your life. Wow. So I stayed at a hotel for a while. And then one day, pardon me. Um, one day I woke up and my phone was dead and I didn't have my charger and probably 12 minutes away from every money. And I'm like getting on the computer trying to find, um, someone to bring me a phone charger. You know, I'm alone in the hotel room can't walk, you know. Wait, what? You can't walk? Yeah. Oh. Talking is compromised. Can't sign my name. So um, I'm messaging everyone. A call is calling my family. My dad and his stepmom live 10 minutes from the hotel. And Colette calls them and like, Please bring Michael a phone charger. And my stepmom's like, Mike, what have we got planned today? Oh, Jesus. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? And then they're like, oh, we'll probably get up there in a couple of hours. Oh, my God. And Colette's freaking out at this point. So it was just... Uh, Comedy of errors, if you will. Here's a tip. Here's a tip, by the way. Most hotels have a lost and found, and it's filled with phone chargers that people have left in rooms. So a lot of times, if you don't have a phone charger, if you go to the front desk, they usually have boxes of them. Brian, you <laughs> think I mean, like... Oh, here, you tried that? Brian, Postmates, Postmates has 7-Eleven on there. going to get to the front desk? Pardon me. <laughs> Pardon me, everyone, but yes. there's a reason none of you have ever toured in Wyoming. It's a fucking wasteland and mutant. All right? Fun fact is it is true. It is one of only, I believe, five states in which there has not been a Kill Tony. There with North Dakota, South Dakota, Alaska, Hawaii, and 
um, Montana. It's funny you should say that because I just found out I was looking this up and figuring out my Ding Dong show has still not been in 49 states. Wow. <laughs> wow. Which Very one's done? interesting. Just goes to you show, later. you know, that's why everyone says that show has the most, like, potential because, like, <laughs> if you, the, there's so much that hasn't been right. done. A lot of ground that hasn't been turned over. <laughs> uh, so, Michael, we have so much to catch up about here. Yes, please. Um, uh, How do I sound? I'm working on it. I Good. swear to God, you know, I'm I'm being dead serious here, and I think everyone would agree with me. This is the best you've sounded in a very long time. Thank you. I'm working on it. In fact, David. for the for the listeners of this show, I told Michael before the episode, I said, uh, you make Lou Gehrig look like a fucking little bitch because you got his disease, and here you are getting better and stronger over the past month or two, and uh, that he, he died from it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank it's you. It's funny you mentioned Thank Lou Gehrig. Because there's a lot of layers to my outfit. People have always told me I look like C. Martin. I am definitely more of a Steve Martin. Um, and um, the white uh, suit is the worst possible choice for a man who can't sign his own name. But this thing that don't come out will simply be pushpins on the map of the rest of my life. All right, faggots. <laughs> <laughs> now, I am, um, and also Lou Gehrig knew he was done with baseball when he can no longer button his jersey. So I wear this very complicated outfit and I put it in and it takes me a while because everyone watches the show and what they don't see is my body is a haunted house on fire. <laughs> so it's just real now. I'm still gonna make it fucking my real heart. Man, I ain't fucking around no more because I am no fucks to give. God damn it, Michael. You are a fucking inspiration. You are the beating heart of this show. I am so glad that you are back. I cannot wait to continue to play every single Monday. You, uh, you bring so much excitement to this fucking show and also so much power and hope and inspiration and we love you welcome home Michael Lair <laughs> and also I was telling Red Band when you were just doing a monologue I, I told him I go no one plays to the fucking camera better than you for those but of yeah, you yeah he's a fucking professional for Look those of that. you that just listened to the show you're really missing out on the incredible eye contact that he makes <laughs> right down the fucking barrel it's like he looks through the camera Hey, can I add one thing? Absolutely. Is there anything you want to plug other than an iPhone charger in no. Wyoming <laughs> into your phone? <laughs> no, go ahead, Michael. Um, I uh, hosted a show on Big Ten Network mm. years ago. Yeah, we're all Big Ten people here. Uh, yeah, Ohio exactly. State, Ohio State, and the organization formerly known as the Michigan Wolverines. Right, Suck my and dick. <laughs> Michigan week. Every week we would go to a different school. Mm -hmm. And Michigan week, I got pink eye from a stripper's butthole flexing. Fuck yeah. Yeah. So there's Hold on a second. You got pink eye from what? A stripper's butthole a flexing. A dirty Michigan butthole. No, and it was East Chicago, Indiana. My, anyway. You didn't say Michigan. No, but I had pink eye during the Michigan episode of Big Ten Tagging on the Big Ten Network. And I want you, Kill Tony Mills, to find the... <laughs> It's okay. obvious I have pink eye. Well, luckily, uh, luckily, 
you know how to handle a <laughs> you know how to handle a Oh, there he is. He's doing a reenactment of what it was like when he had pink eye. My goodness. Who would guess that a guy like you would be capable of getting a disease like that? Okie dokie. Uh, how about one more time for Michael Lair, everybody? He's back. That's another episode of Kill Tony. Here's the drawing from Ryan J. Ebelt. He drew this while you all sat there doing less than nothing. Look at that. Wow. That's great. A very special Halloween drawing. Oh, and look at Don. Wait till you see this, wow. Don. You're going to see it. Got You're right Don down the sex, middle sex there, right underneath my chin. Look at you. Do I look good? It looks exactly like you. It's absolutely incredible. Is All those prints are available at RyanJEbelt.com. Guys, how about a big hand for Don Barris? Oh, yeah. Don, what do you got going on? What's happening? Well, with follow you? me on Simply Don One. That's number one on all this shit. Uh, also, uh, go to Simply Don the Podcast Network, and we have our big three uh, premium channel that's really doing kick-ass business. Finally, Don Barris wins. Yeah, you're goddamn right. He does. He wins all the time. Thank you so much for coming on here. We love Don Barris. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Red Man. Truly the fucking Thank pulsing you, cock of the comedy store. I mean, just a big dicked monster. How about one more time for Don, everybody? <laughs> Guys, look at this. The leader of the band tonight, the great Phyllis Watkins was here. Phyllis, what's going on with you? Hey, check out my brother's special December 8th and uh, yeah. Venmo at Jet Ski Jump. <laughs> Yeah, Venmo Jetski Johnson, all one word. And also, she has ornaments for sale. Go to jetskijohnson.com. Get your Christmas ornaments, but they're really anytime ornaments. You can keep them around 24-7. She makes everything by absolute hand, and that's Jetski Johnson. Guys, how about Chroma Chris on guitar tonight? Chroma, tell us about what you just released on YouTube. Yeah, so you can, uh, my little bro special's coming out December 8th. You can download that and watch that. But um, also, you can go to my uh, Instagram, Chroma Chris. My band, Drac and the Swamp Rats, just uh, released our uh, Jam in the Van session, which is up now. Sweet. Follow him on social media at Chroma Chris. And guys, believe it or not, that guy that known as Joaquin Watkins, I believe that was actually Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez all no. night. Yeah, it was. Joel, tell us what's going on. All right. Well, it's still Walking Walkings. Uh, okay. Let's see. Uh, my my cousin's debut one-hour special called Family Reunion, released to Comedy Dynamics. Here's the trailer. It will be available to rent on Amazon Prime. We or got you can that. pre-order it now. We got it. How about you, Joel? Uh, I got the Mostly Sorry podcast. Uh, we do it every week, me and David Deary. That's it. We love you guys. Peace. Awesome. Red band. Hey, guys, check out uh, Brothers in Cursive on Patreon, patreon.com, Brothers Podcasts. We get him to do a bunch of crazy shit. Last episode, William got shocked to fuck. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Check it out. That's true. And, uh, yeah, fun times, everybody. We'll see you next week.